Hello, my name is Katie Roth, and for my topic, I chose to study the life of Vincent Van Gogh for two reasons. First, I have always been fond of the oil painting Starry Night because of the creative style of it. My second reason is because I have heard many interesting things about Van Gogh's mental health, and I never knew the entire story. So I decided to make Vincent Van Gogh the topic of my research this semester, to find out more about him as a person and an artist, and also to paint my own landscape similar to Starry Night, which is pictured in the background of this slide. Starting off my research, I wanted to take a look at Van Gogh's early life. His full name was Vincent Willem Van Gogh. He was born March 30th of 1853 in Groot Zundert, Holland, and he had three sisters and two brothers. At the age of 16, Van Gogh started to work as an art dealer at the Hague Gallery in 1870, which was managed by French art dealers. Vincent was transferred to London three years later in 1873, and he was soon transferred again, but this time to Paris in 1875. After his final transfer to Paris, Vincent lost interest in his job as an art dealer, and he became depressed. He was soon let go from this field of work. Van Gogh then decided he would attend school to obtain a theology degree, and his father decided to pay his tuition. However, he failed to get his theology degree and dropped out. For a second time in his life, he experienced depression. Wanting to follow in his father's footsteps, he decided he would try his abilities as an evangelist, converting people to Christianity. However, he was in a poor district, and he also became poor and once again depressed. He was dismissed from this job, and he decided he would move back home with his parents and try his skills as an artist with no prior training. Vincent also had a rough history with women because he had proposed to three different women, and they all rejected him for different reasons. First, in 1872, he proposed to a woman named Caroline Hainbeek. Then, in 1873, a year later, Vincent proposed to another woman named Eugene Lawyer. Finally, once more, Van Gogh proposed in 1881 to a woman named Key Voss Stricker. These rejections throughout Vincent's life is theorized to have caused some of Van Gogh's depressive episodes and his lust for prostitutes and random women. Here on the right, I have on the left side Girl in the Street, Two Coaches in the Background in 1882. And then on the right side, Agostina Stegatori sitting in the Café du Tambourin in 1887. He, there is no proof that Van Gogh was with either of these women or that they were prostitutes. I just like the fact that he had painted random women. As previously mentioned... Van Gogh had struggled with signs of minor mental illness in the form of depression. When he changed careers from an art dealer to a college student and then to an evangelist. After his failed proposals and career attempts, Vincent suffered depression and even abandoned his religion of Christianity. He wrote to his brother Theo saying, My only anxiety is, how can I be of use in the world? Van Gogh did not let his anxiety stopped him from finding a new career match for him, however. He decided to move home with his parents and try his hand as an artist. I will get more into that a little bit later. On the right side here, I have a picture that he drew called Sorrow. It was drawn in 1882, and I think it really just fits his mood at this time period. In 1880, Van Gogh was 27 years old, and he decided he would become a self-taught artist. He learned how to draw and paint on his own. He was living in a studio alone, and he decided he would try for love again a year later after his third failed proposal. Van Gogh started to pity prostitutes and decided to rescue a woman off the streets in 1881. I will go deeper into this in a later slide. After his fourth known failed love attempt, Vincent decided he would move to Paris with his brother Theo. 
who offered his financial and emotional support. This is when Van Gogh discovered post-impressionism and painted various self-portraits. Two of those self-portraits are at the bottom of the screen on the right side. First is self-portrait with gray felt hat in 1887. Next is self-portrait with dark felt hat at the easel in 1889. At the top left corner, I have bulb fields in 1883 and on the right, potato eaters in 1885. These paintings are spread out throughout his career. However, I liked them, so I decided to put them in to showcase his abilities throughout times in his career. As previously mentioned, Van Gogh rescued a prostitute named Sine Hornick and her young daughter from living on the streets in 1881. Sine was pregnant at the time, and Vincent's family did not approve of this decision, so he alienated them. Van Gogh was attempting to fill the void of previously failed proposals and the newfound void of isolating his family. During this period of time, 1881 to 1883, Van Gogh created many artworks featuring Sign, her activities, her daughter, and even her newborn baby. In 1883, Vincent's father was threatening to put him in an insane asylum if he did not leave sign, and his brother Theo warned him to listen. On the right side of the screen, I have many pictures of sign. Um, on the left top corner, I have sign in a white bonnet in 1882. On the bottom left, I have sign nursing baby, also 1882. In the middle, sign with umbrella and prayer book, 1882. On the top right, sign peeling potatoes, 1883, and on the bottom right, girl kneeling by a cradle, also 1883. These are just a few of the many, many portraits that he did of sign, her children, and her activities. So what happened next? After listening to his brother and father, Van Gogh, moved back home with his parents and continued to create art. After a few years, he moved back to Paris, but this time without his brother Theo. This is when Van Gogh discovered post-impressionism and it became a big focus in his style. This move to Paris helped Vincent grow his connections with other artists. However, he soon began, began his serious descent into mental illness. In 1886, Van Gogh started to experience many symptoms, including paroxysms, or a sudden attack or violent expression of particular emotion slash activity, epigastric sensations, or pain in the upper, upper abdomen just below the ribs, lapsus, or loss of consciousness, tonic hand spasms, or painful muscle contractions, Amnestic phases, or loss of short-term memory and confusion. He was also moody, untidy, and had tempers. Now looking at Van Gogh's mental downfall continued. It is reported that Van Gogh was drinking a substance called absentee at the time, which is an alcohol that contained drug properties. It was preferred by French artists. During my research, I could not find which drug which that was in this drink, but it is said that this substance contributed to Vincent's unwellness at the time. Van Gogh was living with his brother Theo at the time in Paris, and it is reported that Vincent kept him up all night with endless disputes with himself. Theo wrote in a letter to one of their younger sisters, saying, quote, It seems as if he were two persons, one marvelously gifted, tender, and refined, the other egotistical and hard-hearted. They present themselves in turns, so that the one hears him talk first in one way, then in the other and always with arguments on both sides. 
It is a pity that he is his own enemy, for he makes life hard, not only for others, but for himself. I also, in research, found that Theo did think of Van Gogh as a burden in this time period. In 1888, Van Gogh moved to Arles without his brother Theo this time, but with his continued financial support. Even though he was a successful artist at the time, he still had not gained any recognition. Vincent's mental illness became even worse with new symptoms, including dysphoria alternating with euphoria, or a state of unease alternating with a state of intense excitement, anguish or severe mental or physical pain or suffering. He complained of poor circulation and a weak stomach. Theo convinced Paul Gauguin, a French artist, to move to Arles with Vincent to work together in a studio because Vincent complained of being lonely. However, things only got much worse. Gangan's stay only lasted two months when he told Van Gogh he decided to leave on December 24th of 1888. This angered Vincent, and his reaction to the news was throwing a drink in Gangan's face. When Gangan left to return to his house in Arles, Vincent followed him home and threatened him with a razor blade. This attack failed, and Van Gogh then returned to his home and cut off a part of his earlobe. He then presented his severed ear as a gift to his favorite prostitute, Rachel. She reported this to the police, and Vincent was taken away to solitary confinement. After three days in isolation, he had no memory of this manic episode and spent a total of two weeks in the hospital. A doctor named Dr. Ray diagnosed Van Gogh with epilepsy and prescribed him with medication to help with his issues. Three weeks after his admission to the hospital, Van Gogh had come out of his psychotic state and painted Self-Portrait with Bandage Ear and Pipe, 1889, which is pictured on the top right. Vincent continued to have psychotic episodes, and he had two more followed by short hospitalizations after each one. In May of 1889, Van Gogh was willingly admitted to the Asylum of St. Remy, and he was failing to take his medication. Vincent's psychotic episode had lasted from February to April. He was, while he was in the asylum, he produced over 300 works, including Starry Night at the end of 1889, which is pictured on the bottom left. At the end of 1889, Theo got engaged and married, and by the beginning of 1890, Theo was a father. Each of the ev these events reportedly worsened Vincent's condition. By May of 1890, Van Gogh was cleared by his doctor and discharged from the asylum. He then moved back to Paris. Vincent was starting to gain recognition, and he sold his first painting. He began to work at a rapid pace, producing 70 paintings and 30 drawings in just 70 days. While Van Gogh was working on his last known painting, field with stacks of wheat pictured at the bottom right, he borrowed a gun from a friend to allegedly scare away the crows in the fields. With the same gun, he shot himself days later in the upper abdomen and was hospitalized. Two days after this suicide attempt, Vincent Van Gogh died by his brother Theo's side in the hospital. This is my painting, which is similar to Starry Night. It is a night landscape. At the top left corner, I did my best to recreate the sky in Starry Night with the swirling blues and the way that the stars are pictured. On the top middle, I created a shore with trees. Then on the top right, I really went back and I filled in the sky and I added more texture to the shoreline and the trees. On the bottom left, I went in and I started to create my ocean. On the bottom middle, 
I added some highlight to the trees, to the shores, and then on the bottom right corner, I added my final touches, my stars, I added some more texture to the trees and to the shore, and then I added some final highlights to the ocean. To really get as close to Vincent van Gogh as possible, I used oil paint and I used a canvas board. I really liked painting this painting and it actually only took me a week which really surprised me. However, my pace was not nearly as rapid as, as Vincent van Gogh's pace. Thank you so much for watching my presentation on Vincent van Gogh. I really learned a lot and it really surprised me how many mental illnesses he had. Next you'll see my work cited. Thank you so much.